latter half of the 16th century, Germany was decentralized, having about 360 different autonomous entities. These entities consist of secular principalities, ecclesiastical principalities, numerous free cities, and knights ruling small areas from castles. Germany had some unity within their borders, but did not have unity like Spain, England, and France. Germany's entities all had different currencies and had tariffs for trades which made trading difficult. In 1555, the Peace of Augsburg was made because of the tension between the Lutherans and Catholics. The law stated that whoever is the ruler of the land decides the religion of the land. The Lutherans, after the Peace of Augsburg, were successful in gaining the rights to worship the Catholic lands because of the Reformation weakening the Catholic rulers' positions. The opposing side, the Catholics, struggled to gain these rights in areas where the ruler were Lutheran, which created more animosity between the two religions. Frederick III was a Calvinist ruler in the Holy Roman Empire and became the elector of Palatine, a ruler within the Palatine. The German town of Heidelberg became a hub for Calvinism in a land where that was not allowed. Because Calvinism was not considered a legal religion under the Peace of Augsburg, the Lutherans and Catholics both did not like them. The Lutherans especially did not like them because the Peace of Augsburg is what helped the Lutherans establish their own lands, having a group of people who were infringing on the laws made them fearful of them. Protestants as well as Catholics set up groups that would bring their religion to cities that were not already converted. The Catholic Bavaria, supported by Spain, became militarily and ideologically for the Counter-Reformation what the Palatine was for the Protestantism. From Bavaria, the Jesuits launched missions throughout the empire that won major cities such as Strasbourg and Annsbruck. The Jesuits brought these cities back to Catholicism by 1600. Maximilian I, the Duke of Bavaria, organized a Catholic group to counter a new Protestant group that had been formed. After the Archduke of Styria, Ferdinand, who was a Habsburg, ascended to the Bohemian throne in 1618. Ferdinand was a devout Catholic who was determined to restore traditional faith to the Eastern Habsburg. When Ferdinand became the King of Bohemia, he revoked the religious freedoms of the Bohemian Protestants. The freedoms were put into place in 1575 and were reinforced by Emperor Rudolf II in his letter of majesty. The nobility of the Protestants in Prague saw the freedoms being revoked and responded by throwing his regents out the window of the royal palace in an event known as the Defenestration of Prague. Soon after, Ferdinand was elected Holy Roman Emperor as Ferdinand II. The Bohemians, however, still had animosity for Ferdinand and declared their king to be Frederick V, the Calvinist elector to the Palatine. Doing this caused an international war. Spain sent troops to Ferdinand, which motivated other people to join in the war, such as Maximilian of Bavaria and John George I of Saxony. Maximilian wanted to wrest the electoral title from his Palatine cousin, and John George wanted to gain land over the electoral Palatine. The war was not only about religion, but also about politics and territories. Ferdinand's army routed Frederick V's troops at the Battle of White Mountain in 1620. By 1622, Ferdinand had already subdued, re-Catholicized and conquered the Palatine, Maximilian of Bavaria, started to take the war into northwestern Germany, claiming as much land as possible. The Danish period began when the Lutheran king of Denmark, Christian IV, saw an opportunity to extend Danish influence into the northern cities of the Holy Roman Empire. With the support from the English, French, and the Dutch, the Danish marched into Germany under the guise of the Protestant resistance. Christian IV was quickly humiliated by Maximilian and was forced back into Denmark. Maximilian's continued military success was a threat to Emperor Ferdinand, who wished to replace him with a soldier more submissive to his command. Emperor Ferdinand appeared an outbreak of Wallenstein. Albrecht had earned the respect of Ferdinand by joining forces during the conquest of Bohemia. Wallenstein carried out Ferdinand's campaign in Denmark, which he commanded an army of more than 100,000 men. By 1629, Wallenstein had broken Protestant resistance to such a great extent that Ferdinand issued the Edict of Restitution, which reasserted the pro-Catholic views of the Peace of Augsburg and confirmed the illegality of Calvinism. When the Lutheran Gustavus Adolphus II became the King of Sweden, the Swedish period of war began. Two people were controlling him from the sidelines, the first being Cardinal Richelieu and the second being the Dutch. Gustavus had aligned himself with the electors in Brandenburg and Saxony, and with them on his side he was able to deliver a glorious victory in Bretfield in the year 1630. This victory would completely reverse the course of the Thirty Years' War. 
He would achieve this victory utilizing his military genius and adoption of new strategies that involved the simultaneous employment of fire and charge tanks by both his cavalry and his infantry, denser squares of troops, and a balance of offense and defense amongst his men that would ensure his victories. Gustavus would eventually die, though, at the Battle of Wilson by Wallenstein's forces. Shortly after, though, Wallenstein, having exhausted his usefulness and becoming overly demanding of his bargains, would be assassinated by Ferdinand II. Eventually, the Peace of Prague would be struck in 1635, where, with Saxony at the helm, the German states made peace with Ferdinand II. France and the Dutch would continue to support Sweden rather than join the peace, and this refusal would leave the Thirty Years' War to begin its final and most brutal period. of time for 13 years was ushered in where France, the Swedes, and Spain warred across Germany, looting the nation for all the profits that could be made. Germany was too weak and ununited to stand up for itself and just allowed itself to be desecrated. Eventually, after the deaths of one third of the German population, peace talks began in Westphalia in 1644. The Treaty of Westphalia ended all hostilities within the Holy Roman Empire while recognizing the religious rights of certain minority groups. It established the practice of private worship. The treaty was written in French, not Latin, becoming the diplomatic language of Europe. It reasserted the major feature of the religious settlement of the Peace of Augsburg, which allowed the rule of the land to determine its religion. The treaty broadened the legal status of Protestantism, officially recognizing Calvinism as a sect of Protestantism. The Treaty of Westphalia was outright opposed by the Pope, but the papacy had no power to prevent its passing. The treaty officially recognized the sovereignty of Switzerland and the Netherlands. While there was no clear winner of the Thirty Years' War, certain areas would expand their influence throughout Europe. France would become Europe's dominant political power. France and Sweden kept political influence in Germany for decades after. Brandenburg Prussia is one of the only territories of the Holy Roman Empire to hold their political influence, emerging as the most powerful northern German territory. The treaty resolved long-standing conflicts between England and Spain, which were originally started due to religious and political differences between the country. The Treaty of Westphalia reinforced German division and weakness of German authorities. Only Austria and Brandenburg Prussia would retain influence in the Holy, Holy Roman Empire. The rest of Europe would fully develop the nation-state that had been budding in Europe for centuries. Each of these nations would develop their own political, cultural, and religious identity that would shape the nationalist identity that would define Europe over the next couple centuries. The Thirty Years' War completely changed the face of Europe, both in a figurative and literal sense, as the war drastically impacted the map of Central Europe. The last of Europe's great religious wars and the, and the treaty that ended the conflict would impact Europe far more than the religious realm as it would influence European politics and the balance of power for centuries to come.